Our story begins. 1978. The White Development Corporation was a building company started by a partnership between Bill and Hillary Clinton and James and Susan McDougalls. They borrowed $203,000 to buy 220 acres of land in the Ozark Mountains for a vacation home development project. Between the years of 1980 and 1982, James McDougalls, who served as the Economic Development Director for Bill Clinton during his time as governor, quit the company to buy a small savings and loan bank in Kingston Arc, later named Madison Guarantee. He loaned Hillary Clinton $30,000 to build a model home on the Whitewater lot. In 1984, Madison Guarantee came under federal scrutiny after he was found with speculative land deals, insider dealing, and hefty commissions paid out to McDougal, McDougal and others. 1985, James McDougal improperly withdrew money from a depositor fund to pay off a $50,000 Clinton campaign debt for one of her fundraisers. He hires the Rose Law Firm, which Hillary Clinton joined in 1976 and became a partner in 1979 to represent his failing Madison Guarantee Bank. Hillary Clinton and fellow Rose lawyers attempted to seek state regulatory approval for a recapitalization plan for the bank. What is debt recapitalization? Debt recapitalization is a jargon term. It's to make you confused. What is recapitalization? Well, it's debt recapping. It's adding new debt to increase liquidity for a business or for a company or, in most cases, a small bank. What does it do? It adds new wealth to the owners. Or it can be purposed for paying dividends to stockholders. But the entire thing is completely based on lenders basing the amount of money given to them and their payback rates on market speculation and earnings speculation. So we are coming into another territory of speculative trading. In 1986, James McDougalls borrows $300,000 from a company owned by David Hale, a Little Rock judge retired. David Hale's company receives federal funds from the Small Business Administration that is meant to lend money to disadvantaged small business owners. Ten years later, an investigation reveals that he lent up to $3 million to political figures instead. James McDougal Dougal is removed as president from Madison Guarantee, but is allowed to retain his ownership. Hillary Clinton is revealed to have requested the destruction of the Madison land contract files, witnessed by an employee of the Rose Law Firm in 1988. She contacts James McDougal's for power of attorney to sell off the remaining Whitewater lots and clear up bank obligations. In 1989, Madison Guarantee eventually collapses after a series of bad loans and changes in governmental accounting procedures. The federal government shuts it down after spending $60 million in bailouts directly to them. James McDougalls is indicted on federal fraud charges relating to the mismanagement of the Madison real estate subsidiary. He is later acquitted of all wrongdoing in 1990. In 1992, the Clinton presidential campaign gathers information on Whitewater and Madison Guarantee. They claim they lost $68,000 in Whitewater, the estimate of which was later adjusted down to just over $40,000. The Clintons come under scrutiny by the Justice Department after a referral from the Federal Resolution Trust Corporation, suggesting that they were potentially beneficiaries of illegal, illegal activities at Madison Guarantee. In June of 1993, Vince Foster Jr., Hillary Clinton's partner at the Rose Law Firm and later the Deputy White House Counsel, files three years of delinquent Whitewater Corporation tax returns. In August of 1994, Kenneth Starr, a former federal appeals court judge and U.S. solicitor during the Reagan and Bush administration, reissued a subpoena for the documents such as the Rose billing records for Hillary Clinton. In August of 1995, James and Susan Dougals, plus Arkansas government Jim Guy Tucker, are charged by a grand jury with bank fraud relating to questionable loans. The Whitewater trial 
for government Jim Guy Tucker and the McDougals begins in Little Rock on March 4th, 1996. Governor Tucker and the McDougals are convicted of nearly all fraud and conspiracy charges that Kenneth Starr lodged against them 10 months earlier on May 26, 1996. Jim Guy Tucker resigns as governor of Arkansas on July 15, 1996. He receives a suspended four-year sentence after his doctor testifies that he would die of liver disease while imprisoned. He was instead placed under home detention and fined $319,000. On August 20th, 1996, Susan McDougall is sentenced to two years in prison for obtaining an illegal loan from the Whitewater Venture. She is offered a chance to testify on September 4th of 1996, but is sent back to prison after a refusal to cooperate with prosecutors claiming she didn't trust them. Really? <laughs> on July of July 30th, 1997, she is moved into a federal detention facility after seven months in two different Los Angeles jail, which she spent 23 hours a day locked in a windowless celled room. After a lawsuit filed by the American Civil Liberties Union, alleging that Starr had her held under barbaric conditions in an attempt to coerce her to testify, she is offered another chance to testify on April 23, 1998, after completing her 18th month contempt of court sentence, but refused yet again. She is forced to fully serve her two year fraud sentence. On May 4th, 1998, she is indicted on charges of criminal contempt and obstruction. On April 14th, 1997, James McDougall is sentenced to three years in prison for his conviction on 18 fraud and conspiracy charges. Starr requested a reduction in a sentence for cooperation. He died in 1998 on March 8th, months before he hoped to be released from prison. January 4th, 1996, Hillary Clinton's billing records from the Rose Law Firm are found by Clinton's aide, Carol Huber, after two years, who claims she found them in August 1995, but wasn't sure of their significance until now. Records show that Hillary Clinton is found to have performed 60 hours of legal work for Madison Gantry from 1985 to 1986. April 22, 1996, Dave Hale, the ex-owner of the government-funded lending company, pleads guilty to two felonies. He later testifies that Bill Clinton pressures him to make a fraudulent $300,000 loan to Susan McDougall. <laughs> and later he requests that his name is eliminated from the transaction, destroying the paper trail yet again. In 1996, June 17th, the second Whitewater trial begins. Arkansas banker Herbie Banscum, Jr., that's a great name, Banscum, or Branscum, scums right in there, and Robert Hill are accused of illegally reimbursing themselves. For political contributions, including Clinton's gubernatorial and presidential campaign using bank funds. On July 7, 1996, Bill Clinton testifies on tape for the second Whitewater trial. On July 18, 1996, his testimony is aired at the trial, in which he denies naming two unpaid state employees for their contribution in his 1990 gubernatorial campaign. On October 1, 1996, Branscombe and Hill are cleared of four counts of bank fraud by a federal jury, which is undecided for seven other charges. Like, comment, subscribe, enjoy it. I enjoyed saying it, so I'll see you next time.